It is a pleasure to introduce the second uh, lecture by uh, uh, Carlos Ruiz from Colegio Burbaquí, and he will be speaking about the composition of algebraic sets in fields with valuation, I believe. Yes. So uh, this is a continuation. This is the second class of these minicars, and thank you so much, uh, Carlos, for agreeing speak with us and let's just get going. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for um, giving me this opportunity. I have, if I remember correctly, I should have uh, three depths with you, uh, or at least three, three depths with you. So I made a mistake and this paper was not uh, McIntyre, it's uh, actually Gabrielo the one with uh, many counterexamples to quantify elimination in exponential fields. Um, I can send this, uh, the title to you, Ernesto, so you could share, the, share it with, with them. Actually, it's, it's a very nice paper. Um, so my second depth was, uh, it's uh, related to uh, um, a version of null shelling sets uh, in, uh, in valued fields, actually, uh, it's a very recent uh, preprint. Um, it is not the algebra. It is not an analog of algebraic null shell sets, but it's an analog of uh, uh, the analytic version of uh, the, the one which is usually called the Rookert's null shell sets. Um, so, so these two papers might be might be interesting for you because I mean here. Uh, it's a uh, 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 precise statement of what uh, notional sets could mean using quantifier elimination. Um, so, and my third uh, depth, I, I'm sorry, I might not be able to give a full proof of uh, the statement I gave yesterday because, as I told you, I might. Uh, need to to run um, okay so um do you remember last time that i i said if we have f uh some algebraically closed field and we have f prime another algebraic closed field in more theory people say acf uh and and we said that if we have some uh, system of equations, which is over F uh, that has a solution in, um, in F prime. Then uh, by uh, this uh, quantifier elimination, you could prove that this, uh, this uh, family of equations will also have a solution uh, here, right? So then, then I said that uh, using this, this kind of ideas, you could prove uh, no shell sets. Um, I, I, I probably gave you a version of uh, no shell, a weak version of no shell sets. I think that if F is an algebraically closed field, and you take uh, some prime ideal, um, then uh, this is non-empty, right? Um, so actually, um, I look for, for a more general version of new shine sets uh, using this quantifier elimination, and I didn't find uh, something very, uh, something, Interesting, but this statement is quite easy, right? right? Because um, you could uh, just say that uh, F prime is the algebraic closure of the uh, of the fields generated by this ring. So let me write this as the algebraic closure and uh, well, you, you could, uh, you know that inside these fields, you have a solution 
for for this because uh, it's zero then uh, you could just use what i said yesterday sorry i, I mean I, I could finish this but uh, uh, let me let me continue with the the second part which is c minimality okay yes. um so c minimality is um uh, uh model theoretic definition that uh, is used by Ushavsky and Kajdan uh, to uh, give uh, a very simple and neat, defin uh, neat uh, representation of definable sets inside an algebraically closed value field. Okay, so I will give the same definition uh, Ushavsky and Kajdan give in their in their article of c-minimality but it's important to mention that there is a general version of, of c-minimality which i want uh, which uh, actually it's not needed for 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 the rest of, of their their theory okay so i will assume that we have some a small language so when I say language, I mean the atomic definable sets that uh, that I mentioned last time. Right. So I have uh, a, a small language, which is contained in a larger language, which I will call L, right? Um, for example, we could think of a uh, small L as uh, the the language that only includes equality for example right so in this sense if you think about definable sets inside an structure and you think for for example definable sets inside here using equality of course you you have only uh finite or cofinite sets right because remember that the closure of uh, the closure under this definability um, uh, functor is um, is just a finite Boolean combinations. Of course, you could say something like uh, x is different to a given number, but if you if you're all only using equality, you can't say anything more, right? Um, so there is another interesting example where L is just uh, uh, an order. In this case, of course, we're thinking about the real numbers or any order group, for example, Q. Um, and in this case, the, the atomic sets using this small language L would be of finite sets, fi finite sets, but since you have this in your language, you could also define the set of x such that x is uh, is smaller than a given gamma. Yeah, uh, and it's larger than a given gamma prime. So you could define intervals. You could define uh, closed intervals because remember you you also you also have equality. Um, so. At least in one dimension, and in, a, in one when I say dimension, I mean in uh, in the line, right? In the affine line, of course. Um, in in this one dimension, uh, I will all, all, all I will only have uh, uh, intervals or balls, and uh, these finite or cofinite sets. Okay. Well, in the case of, uh, of uh, C-minimal structure, uh, I still uh, didn't say anything about what, uh, what mi minimality means, but uh, I mean, uh, minimality essentially tells you that if you have some small language L, some set of atomic, atomic definable sets, and you enlarge your, your, your definable category, then this large theory, when I say large theory, I mean this theory in the large language, 
is minimal if everything that is definable here uh, in one dimension, only, only using uh, a free variable, it's definable using this, uh, uh, this subset. I, I will explain a bit, a bit more about this, but um, the, the case that we're interested in, we have L, um, so L in, in this case is a bit more difficult because we need uh, two universes, as I said. So we need the structure M uh, with uh, a set that is essentially the field, but we also need to, to consider the disjoint union with, sorry, with a, another set that I will call M sub gamma. This M sub gamma is the order or the image of the evaluation together with, uh, with the order. It's important to say that um, to be precise, we need to have uh, a constant. Um, so this constant uh, mean, I, I will explain what do I mean by this constant, but we also have uh, a function from M, from the fields, of course, into this, this group. Uh, for us, this is, this is only a set right now. Um, and the axioms of this theory in this, in this language tell us, I mean, this is a field, this is an order group, an order abelian group, and um, so MF is a field. So when I say the axioms uh, tells you that this is a field, of course, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that inside this category of definable fields, I am adding all Sarisky both closed and open sets. Okay, so this is a field. And then we also have this as an order group, or a billion group, okay? Um, so now I need to tell you which are the axioms of this function, right? The axioms that, that, that involve this function, um, because I want to explain you which are the definable sets using this, this format, okay? So um, for example, uh, one of the axioms is that the valuation of X minus Y should be equal to infinity if and only if X is equal to Y, right? So the valuation of the zero element uh, is infinity. That's why we need this, uh, this extra symbol. Um, so another axiom tells you that the valuation of X minus Y larger than an element in gamma. So this is an element here. Uh, this is an equivalence relation. Of course, you, you can say this in a first order language. You can explain uh, what uh, an equivalence relation is using first order uh, formulas. So this is another axiom. And when I say- uh, I, have a, I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, your notation for MF and M gamma is reflecting the fact that you are thinking of F and gamma as axioms and M, M gamma as a model for gamma or- Right. M gamma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am using this notation because I think about uh, a theory as a function so every time I give you uh, a different model, uh, this theory will uh, all will so this this function will give you the realization of of this uh, of, of these axioms inside some set, and uh, and these will be the set in this case. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, then. 
when I say that, then I add this as an as an equivalence relation, or a, no, sorry, when I say that I, I add this uh, axiom of being a, an equivalence relation, uh, I mean that I am adding as as a subset those uh, close in, in this case those closed balls in the field, right? Okay, so because uh, it's an equivalent, it's a then it def, it's a definable equivalence relation. Then then the uh, the equivalence classes are of course uh, uh, what uh, what we mean by the by the definable sets. Okay, um, so this this is the theory. Um, this this is usually called the theory of ultrametric. metric spaces but i mean it's it's difficult because there are many theory of theories of ultrametric spaces Ruchowski quotes or, or referred to to which theory of ultrametric spaces he means and um, it's in a book by Poisson that, that you will find the, the the precise definitions okay Okay, so this is my small L, okay? And then my large L, sorry, my large L will be C minimal. So L is C minimal if all, I will say one dimensional, Remember, when I say one dimensional, what I mean is all definable sets with a single free variable, if all one dimensional sets are already defined uh, sorry, if all one dimensional when I say definable, of course, I mean in the in the large language are, are already defined in the small in the, inside the small set. Okay. Could you remind me the definition of one dimensional? Sorry. Could you remind me the definition of one dimensional? What is one dimensional? What so, so, could you remind me the definition of dimension or one dimension? What do you mean? So, sorry, but by one dimension, I, I mean that uh, it's uh, any any definable set D which lives inside here. So, what I am not allowing is definable sets in M cube. So I mean definable sets. Uh, Here M is a matrix, right? Here M is a matrix. Sorry? Here M is M L, right? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Oh, I see. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. It's also true that um there is a, a notion of of dimension for for definable sets, um, which actually it's uh, it's used in the paper by by Ruchowski and Kashan. Um, I mean, I, I can give you an idea of what do we under, understand by dimension, but essentially, a set has dimension. So some set has dimension d. If there is a definable function from, so there is a definable function f um, into mf uh, to the power of d, and this define this should be definable, and this should has have finite fibers. Um, 
and there is some something else that you that you need to add okay but i mean it, it's just the weak notion of, of dimension that, that one would, would imagine but it turns out that this notion of dimension works very good uh in the uh with uh with the specializations or with uh, a local definition of, of a dimension. Okay. Um, but for finite fiber, you mean you already, how can I say, give the cardinality of MF? It's a model, it's already a set. It's already a set. So this so, is a set. So MF, cardinality of MF is already finite. Yeah. No, no, no. no. So, it could be RD. It could be R to the D, because RD, RD is clean space. And you have something that that maps there that that just is kind of a tall. It's kind of a kind of a tall. Yeah. But I mean, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I. You, I don't know if it's possible, but you could also write the question in uh, in the chat. Perhaps it will be easier for me to to, to yeah. answer the question. Um, yeah, we will. I think that Ernesto, I can hear you well, but uh, I'm not sure if I can hear well everyone else. So, I'll sorry. try to repeat the questions. I'll try okay. to repeat. The questions. Okay, well, sorry for that. Um, okay, um, so th this is a, the definition that he, that it's used uh, by by Ruchowski, of course. Uh, he, he's thinking about algebraically closed valued fields, um, but uh, I mean most of the geometry of C-minimal sets uh, could be extended to some other. To, to some other context, and and this is something that uh, has not been uh, hasn't been done. Okay, um, so if you read the paper by by Ruchowski and, and Kazan, you you rarely work. I mean, it's not until the end of the of the paper that you work uh, on the fields or over the fields. Most of the time, you work. Uh, over something or, or your sets, your definable sets, they live inside something that uh, uh, that is called RV. Okay, so this RV, if you think about a, a definable uh, a, a field, you could just uh, consider the invertible elements of uh, of the field, of the valid field, not the residue field, the, the value field, uh, and you quotient these by uh, the um, one plus, um, I think that I don't have any notation for this. It should be okay if I if I say M, where M is the maximal ideal uh, over the um, maximal ideal. So it, it's the, the, the open ball uh, around zero, right? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the valuation of F, it's uh, a valid field. Okay, so m most of the um, of the definable sets uh, that uh, that you work with in the in the in this paper, they live inside here. So in some sense, uh, your your model or your structure is this set. Okay. Um, okay. So actually, the theory that it's proved to be C-minimal, it's uh, it's uh, a theory where where this is your, your universe, and uh, they they you of course I, I should I should mention that this quotient is uh, a quotient uh, as a group, right? So these those are invertible elements, so they have a a group uh, structure, and uh, this is the this is the 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 only structure that it's uh, it's living here so far. But what it, what it's very interesting is that you have um, uh, 
uh, an exact sequence. So this map, uh, it's uh, it's surjective. Uh, th this this works well because of course the the evaluation of uh, one plus the maximal ideal goes to zero. So this uh, this map is is well defined, and uh, you could prove. I mean, it's almost immediate that the residue fields. Um, um, well, I don't need this. Uh, okay, so um, you, you could prove that this is uh, an exact sequence, right? So K is just the residue field. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Good. Yes. Well, why? I mean, why? Could you explain what what is the role of c minimality here? Um. So you explain c minimality. I, I, I why c minimality is related to this? Yeah. I I haven't explained it yet. Sorry. She's going to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I I will explain why. It's uh, it's important to have semi minimality. So, I mean, essentially, uh, I can tell you uh, that if you have a theory as the theory of algebraically closed valued field, which is c minimal, I mean, the c minimality comes from quantifier elimination, um, which is c minimal and which satisfies an exact sequence like this one, then you could um, you can fully uh, describe the category of definable sets here using a tensor product of the of definable sets here um, with the definable sets inside the group, okay? So this happens if C minimal. So of course, I mean, if the field is, or, 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 or if the uh, theory RV is C minimal, and if you have the exact sequence that I just described. So you have those two properties for some theory or for, for some uh, first order theory, then uh description like these ones like this one is true and this uh, this equality is is a strong in the sense that uh it goes to the Gorton the green uh, uh associated to definable sets so you if you have your category of definable sets you you, you will define the Gorton the green in the most naive way you could imagine so of course you have um, uh, you have products, finite products. Uh, you have uh, direct sum, which is just the the disjoint union, and uh, you you you, you define the, uh, for example, the morphisms. There are definable functions inside uh, your 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 structure, and. Um, and this uh, and the quality, this equality that I'm showing to you, goes up to the to the ring structure in the Grotten degree. That that's perhaps the most important result proved by Ruzhovsky and Kajdan, well, at least um, from the model theoretic point of view, that uh, that this this result uh, happens. And um, of course, when I've talked with uh, with people. Uh, who work on uh, on on valid fields, for example, people working on Berkovich spaces. This intuition it's uh, it's something uh, common, right? That you you can understand something about the topology, the, the evaluation topology, using both the let me call it the skeleton in the in the in the value group and the specialization variety. So so the the points in the in the residue field. Okay, so uh, I mean th this is the 
the general version of, of, the, of the result. Um, think about uh, the unit, but uh, I don't know if there is any question so far. So what is, I mean, you, anyway, when you say about C minimality, you say small, small n capital R. So what is small, I mean, small n capital R in this context? So small l yeah. is just the, uh, is, l let me divide, so, Everything that I explained was a two-sorted structure, but I'll give you the full definition. Um, so a small l would be a field structure in F, okay? So this plus also the field structure in k so k is a residue field and then i will say uh three uh, the uh, the group the order group group structure in uh in the in the valuation group okay so a small l has just um, the definable sets in those three universes uh, by themselves, right? No relations between them, okay? So capital L has, uh, has all possible relations uh, between those three objects. What, what do I mean by all possible relations? Well, of course, uh, the function that uh, evaluates the field and of course, the function, the, the specialization function uh, f into k. So, uh, for example, in the classical case of O minimality, uh, with the R and X, what would be L and L? Um, So because in, all minimality is supposed to be a particular case of C minimality. Right. Um, so in that case, small l will be only the um, order. Yeah, yeah. So in, in the classical in the classical case, L will be just the order. The order together with the equality, of course. I mean, you you always have you you always have the equality, and the large L will be the field structure. And where is where is where is X here? Plus the so F will be the real numbers, or some uh, some extension of the real numbers. F field structure plus the order. So the x is in the small l. The well, I mean, you you can think about definable sets in R just using order, right? But you could also think about definable sets inside the real numbers using both the order and the field structure, right? But the exponential is like evaluation, or what is the exponential? Ah, uh, okay, R and x. Um, okay, so I, I'm thinking just about the algebra. So if, if you if you're interested in R and X, then you need to add the the exponential, and you need to add uh, the restrictive versions of the analytic functions. And this is in the large language. Yeah, this is in the large language. And so this is kind of a chow situation where the analytic situation uh, in the big L, it's uh, sometimes is determined by the algebraic situation in the small L. Yeah, that, that's true, except that it's not a theorem, but it's just uh, uh, um, 
as a, a model theoretic setting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but there are terms along those lines in, in this model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because to prove C minimality for R, uh, for R and X, of course, you need to prove quantifier elimination before, right? Because you need to prove that if you have a large, so let's say, in, inside RD, imagine you have. Uh, some definable set in our well, in the large language, right? So imagine you have a, a set in some large dimension where you are using both the exponential and the analytic functions, right? Yeah. So of course you could project this into R, right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, if if you if you have no quantifier elimination, then there is no way to prove that this set is already defined only using this uh, uh, small language, right? Uh -huh. So in yeah, so this okay. this the spirit of these Shao theorems is that magically the quantifier elimination uh, disappears the exponential and the analytic functions. Right. Yeah. Some of the algebraic sets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but it's very important. That this is only a one dimensional scenario. Because That's right. you, you will, of course, want to prove a Chow like theorem in larger dimensions, right? Which is, yeah. I mean, the, the, this result by 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 Rushovsky and, and Kashan, uh, it's I wouldn't dare to call it a, a Chow theorem, but I think that I I understand the the spirit of your question and and I agree with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I I don't know if you have any other question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No. Okay. Um, I'm really struggling because I, I, I might need to, to leave, um, but I don't want to leave now. <laughs> um, you can, you can, we can just call it quits and continue a couple of times on a more private seminar, the more technical details. Okay. Uh, let me let me think what can I say in five minutes, which is both uh, helpful and and meaningful. It, it's a bit uh, difficult to to read the paper by Rushovsky and Kajdan. It's um, um, you could easily get lost into the. Um, I got lost. <laughs> I'm just looking for 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 a particular result that I think it's oh yeah, I know I know what for you. Um, I strongly recommend you this uh, document by by Dale. It's perhaps uh, um, a master thesis or, or something like this, uh, where he explains uh, some some of the ideas of uh, of this paper, but I can't uh, find the result that I want to, to show you. And I'm sure he states it uh, somewhere somewhere here. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So this is this first. I, I need to 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 tell you about orthogonality. So imagine you have some definable set inside the residue field. And so X for me will be the residue field, the, the small k, and Y will be the, um, the group, the evaluation group, right? So this is just a definition. Something definable in the residue field and something definable in the 
in the in the value group will be orthogonal or strongly orthogonal if any set which is definable in the Cartesian product. So think about the the residue field and the value group. And do you agree that using a first order theory you could also define something in this Cartesian product, right? Yep. So this definable set, of and course. The boxes. Huh? It is the finite union of definable boxes. Yeah, exactly. So this definable set is as easy as you could imagine. So that's the definition of uh, of being orthogonal. So it's orthogonal if you have no uh, new relations between the residue field and the value group. Okay. It turns out that the residue field, so it should be some, somewhere here. Mm, yeah, the residue field and the value group are orthogonal, right? So the, this result, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's an hypothesis that you need in order to prove uh, it should be this corollary. Yeah, so this, this corollary you need. So if, you if you're under all the hypotheses, all possible hypotheses that could come from algebraically closed valued fields, perhaps here he, he says. So those uh, those two those two elements are strongly orthogonal. What I just told you. So anything that it's definable inside the group structure of the residue field is just uh, linear combinations over the integers. So this is just quantified elimination over algebraically closed fields. Uh, anything which is definable in the valued field, uh, its projection in here, it's finite. So, okay, this, this is a result. Uh, this shouldn't be easy. Yeah, this, this is a result by Rosovsky and Kazan, of course. Um, but I mean, this is one of the things they prove. So under all those hypotheses, which are true for algebraically closed uh, fields, then um, every definable set here in the value field is a disjoint union of, uh, I mean, some uh, some algebraic some group action of definable sets. Well, definable sets are very easy. So definable sets are your just a, a set here, a definable set here which we mean a definable set in the algebraically closed fields, which is just Sarisky, times the, um, uh, yeah, times the, so why it's something very easy as well. So why, why is essentially uh, uh, O, o minimal uh, set, Ernesto, because, uh, my C is an O minimal group. So C has no field structure, that's the difference. Um, and up to this function, this, uh, this definable set is just a product of, of, those, of those sets, right? So what I, what I told you, it's um, this orthogonality goes in any, any possible dimension. Um, inside the algebraic closed valid field, right? Um, then you, you could say this in terms of uh, Grothendieck ring and perhaps here they prove, yeah, here they, they define the, the Grothendieck ring. And um, so uh, so you, you, you also have a, a tensor product of course. And the theorem is that this, this is surjective and moreover, you can understand the kernel of this of this uh, function, but uh, perhaps I'm just uh, uh, explaining things not not the way I should. Okay, I don't know. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. So may I ask you, anyway, how this idea of losing essentially was used to define this uh, integration? I mean, what is the key role of this logic? I mean, logic in this theory. So the question is, the question is, why would, would one go through all the trouble of all these quantified elimination arguments in order to define the the right motivic rings for motivic integration? Okay. Uh, 
I, I don't think it's the right uh, uh, notion, but at least this, this can help us because uh, we could also, uh, as we could, as we can define, as we can understand definable sets, we can understand definable functions. We can we can also define understand um, forms uh, in this topology. Okay, so so the next step will be to have um, uh, an equivalent version of differ of, of differential form or, or form. Uh, and uh, and once you you can do this, then defining the integral is uh, or, or computing an, an integral is just a matter of uh, of some quantifier free uh, set, right? So I mean, so, so, so anyway, you may I ask you is the essential step is the theorem you mentioned this definable set in this uh, this large L or this uh, this orthogonality yeah result. it's orthogonality is this yeah yeah that's that's, this that's essential step yeah oh I see thank you thank you and you could extend this result to uh, not not all not all uh, to forms as well yeah so it's not in this paper and uh, and it's not uh, in uh, it's a it's a different it's a bit of uh, it's a, a different direction but uh, in the work by Lucer and uh, Ruschowski uh, of Berkovich spaces in their definition of a, of a Berkovich space um, it's uh, it's uh, essentially the same idea of course. Uh, it sounds uh, simplistic, and I, I, I don't mean that, but uh, that's uh, one of the main steps. Thank you very much. Well, we would like to thank uh, Carlos for this uh, extremely insightful uh, map to the wilderness of quantifier elimination. We'll torture him further because he seems to understand this very well, so we'll torture him further and we'll invite him hopefully his visa will come out soon so we shall have to have him physically here uh, to have more intense conversations but for now let's thanks uh, thank uh, carlos this excellent talk and we'll be back at uh, 2 p.m that's right